I'm about to prune or complete the pruning of this dwarf Alberta spruce forest. I was doing it the other evening and I suddenly said to myself, why am I wasting this lovely opportunity to show uh, you YouTube followers what I do? There are so many chores on the nursery that I do, but I never think of showing it on YouTube but it's finding the time to make the videos for you that I think is the main problem. This is a customer's uh, bonsai. And you will have probably gathered by now that many of our customers, they love to buy these things from us, but when it comes to maintaining the bonsai, they don't have much of a clue as to how to do it. And I'm sure many of you will be uh, faced with the same sort of problem. I don't blame them because it is quite a daunting and intricate task. Now, looking at this forest, you will have seen that I've already done half the forest. This is a forest group that we made from ordinary dwarf Alberta spruce. This is the raw material that we use for making it. Um, some of you will know that they're sold as Christmas trees, but we grow them in small pots, keep it restricted and the growth is a bit tight and not so vigorous and we use this as the raw material for making either individual bonsai, this has just been wired the other day from this sort of material and sometimes we put several of them together to make a lovely forest group. Not everyone thinks of using material like this to make a forest but when they're made into a forest, they do look quite convincing. So, as I said, I started doing half the forest, so half of it is done. There are two reasons why I'm showing you midway, because it is quite a time-consuming task. To do this part of the forest, there are four, three, seven, nine trees, took me about two hours to complete and you know that I work very fast. So two hours in my time is probably six hours or eight hours in your time. And the amount of material I got out of this forest is all that. So much material was pruned from this side. So you can see a lot of material came out of that. Now this side also has there are two, four, five, I think there are seven trees again on that side. So it's a group of 14, rather unlucky number. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to tackle this. Now, this is really a dense jungle rather than a forest. So how do we begin? If you look at the two, you will have to admit that this looks more elegant. They look like tall trees in a forest, whereas this is really nothing. So how do we get from this to this? So let's begin by showing you. I will have to cut it short because it does take quite a lot of time. So as with all these bonsai tasks where you're trying to create a tree that looks like a mature tree, the trick is to show the trunk. Finding the trunk is the answer. So. It may seem a bit drastic, but you have to really go at it quite vigorously and proceed to show the trunk. Remember, it's the long, big branches that you don't really need. You want the short branches, which give the effect, by contrast, that the tree looks larger than it really is. So you can see I've shown the trunk of this little baby one here. I think this is part of a trunk of this big tree, but it looks like two trees. And then I will start going upwards. These are all lovely cuttings, and I'm going to do another video later on about cuttings. Now this one has a split head. That means it's got two trunks over here. So what do I do? 
I'll remove this one. I hope you won't faint looking at me doing this, but you've got to be a bit ruthless. But I have an overall view in sight. I try to separate the little tree out. So that is that little tree. So these are the two trees that I've just done. And from those two trees already I've got that much out of it. Now let's move to the next one. Remember that in a forest the trees are growing very close to each other and because they don't get enough light these side branches die and they also are very squashed when they grow in a forest so we want to give that tall slim look. This is late spring but you can see that this plant has already made about two or three inches of growth so all that has to come off. If you didn't prune this, can you imagine in a couple of years this will become even more overgrown. So this amount of growth has been produced only in the last year. So this is quite a job to keep on top of it. Now this very long limb is really a branch. Now this branch doesn't do anything really. So you've just got to bite the bullet and take it off. Don't be afraid of taking the trunk high up. That means removing the branches so that it's bare for most of the way. Look at it, all that is bare. So that gives it the semblance or the impression of height. So showing the leg or showing the trunk is very important. That is part of the trick. All these long shoots coming off. And then where it's tight, I'm trying to layer the branches so that I have separate layers. Try not to be distracted by the other trees at the back. Just concentrate on this one. You could or even put a sheet of white plastic behind to see what you're doing. I might well do that in a minute, just to show you the individual tree, what it looks like. Remember, I'm taking alternate branches out so that there is a gap between each branch. The front you can it's safely safe remove. Here. See, this is a long branch. I'm taking that out. See, when so we, we get, get to the, to the top, top, there's a, a twin, twin leader, leader there. And we've got to do something to that. Also, also you, you get, get these, these upright, upright shoots, shoots growing, growing, which will become, become leaders. leaders. That, that you want to remove, because you want to keep the horizontal branches. I've now put a white plastic bag behind the three trees that I've pruned just to give you a better impression. And this is a good uh, trick to use. See, if it was there, you don't see it easily, isn't it? So if you're not sure of what you're doing, then this may be the answer. You get a much better impression of what you're doing. Now I'm faced with this very tricky decision here tree has got two heads or two leaders. What do I do with this? I know that in nature you do get situations like this, but I think I will take the rather bold decision to remove this. Or if you didn't want to do it like a straight cut, you can also make this into a gin and do it that way. Leave a little stub a bit of driftwood, you can refine it. Entirely up to you. You can let your 
artistic imagination run a bit wild and do that. The overall shape of the tree, remember, is always conical. All these long branches trim back, so we're going to get that cone shape. These branches at the back we can shorten. And then here we've got to thin it out. We don't have this blobby effect. So take out intervening branches so that you have space between separate layers, subsequent layers. We're nearly at the top. And then trim the top. Don't let it keep growing longer and longer. And that I would say is number three done. So now let's move on to the next one. And so it goes on. So perhaps I will keep this piece of plastic so you get a better idea. I'm so used to doing it that I don't usually need that aid. But for the sake of this video, it may help you to see properly what I'm doing. I usually can visualize this. So I'm just cleaning the stems. That I don't need. Shorten these. So this again is another like twin trunk. It's far too tall. All this is grown this year. They will bud back. Dwarf Alberta spruce has this lovely scent. So I love working on these because you get this lovely fragrance. It's better than a pine. There you go. This is a tall leader. I take that out. It may seem rather drastic, but this is where you've got to really take some bold decisions. That. There, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just thinning. It's just a process of thinning out and keeping the height within control so that it doesn't run away. You can already see there are some brown needles in there and that is because those branches don't get light and they would eventually die. So letting in light does help this thing to grow better. There you go. So that's the effect. So that's one done. So I won't waste too much time. I'll complete the other ones in the same way and then I'll show you the finished effect in just a minute. Right, I've now completed pruning the right hand side of the forest and you can see how much thinner and elegant it is. You can literally see through it and you can admire the beautiful tall trunks and the tall trunks really give you the impression that these are tall elegant trees. When it was all bushy it didn't look anything. It didn't even look like a forest. And to show you how much I've removed, you can see there are two piles. This pile on the right hand side was taken from this group. And this pile here was removed two days ago from the left hand side. So that is just one branch that I pruned off from some of these branches here. So be bold when you do it and you will get these lovely elegant results. So this is how you would prune a Picea group. So it's not just pruning the Picea forest. You can apply the same principles to pruning this tree and making it look like a bonsai. So these thinning principles apply across the board, not, ju not just to groups, but to individual trees. So I hope you've learned something from this. Thank you.